Base launch checked and countdown net, pad is clear. 10, 9, 8, Launch auto sequence 7, has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for launch. Separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Hello everyone. You are looking at a live view of Falcon Heavy on historic launch complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center, awaiting liftoff at 8.26 p.m. Eastern Time. Welcome back to our live webcast of the Viasat 3 Americas mission from SpaceX headquarters here in Hawthorne, California. My name is Atticus Videra, and I'm a propulsion engineer here at SpaceX. Now, if you joined us on Friday, you know we did get roughly to T minus 59 seconds in the count when the vehicle called an abort. Aborts are a standard part of the countdown process. If the vehicle sees anything that's even slightly off, it'll abort the countdown to give teams on the ground extra time to review any potential issues before flight. The teams did work through these checks, and the vehicle and payloads are healthy. We are now looking forward to liftoff just a few minutes from now. Today we have three payloads on the mission. Those are Viasat 3 as the primary payload for our customer, Viasat. Viasat 3 is expected to be the world's highest capacity satellite and will be the largest all-electric satellite ever to be launched. In addition to Viasat 3, we also have two secondary payloads on board the second stage. Those two payloads are Astronus's MicroGeo satellite and Gravity's CubeSat Gravity Space 1. Both are scheduled to deploy after Viasat, which will be a few hours after liftoff. And as we mentioned during our last attempt, for this mission, we do need a lot of extra performance to help deliver these satellites to their final destination in a geostationary orbit high above the surface of the Earth. In order to do this, we will not be recovering the side boosters or the center core, and instead each will burn the fuel that we typically use for landing. Now, because we're not recovering the boosters or sec center core, there's no need for landing legs, which you'll notice on the bottom of your screen there, have been removed. We've also removed the grid fins, and this is just to save a little bit of mass for some extra performance on the vehicle. Our Merlin vacuum engine today will light three times during this mission. The last burn will take place around the T plus four hour and 20 minute mark into flight. Deployments will wrap up about 25 minutes after the final burn, and that makes our mission duration for today just under five hours. At T minus 10 minutes and 48 seconds, systems are currently a go for an on-time liftoff. The vehicle is nearly fully loaded with propellants, the range is green and ready to support. Now, if for some reason we do not launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. Now at T minus 10 minutes and 30 seconds and counting, let's take a closer look at the Falcon Heavy vehicle. Hey everyone, I am Jesse Anderson, a production engineering manager here at SpaceX. Falcon Heavy is a two-stage vehicle, just like Falcon 9, but the first stage of Falcon Heavy uses three boosters, whereas Falcon 9 only has one. You can think of Falcon Heavy as essentially three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together, which means that it can carry much larger payloads. Each side booster has flown before, one booster having flown twice and the other seven times before. The center core is new, but as Atticus mentioned, we won't be attempting to recover our side boosters or center core on today's mission. Falcon Heavy has 28 engines total. Each one of Falcon Heavy's boosters has nine Merlin 1D engines, making for a total of 27 engines across all three boosters, and you can see that incredible view on your screen. At full power, these 27 engines produce the same thrust as 18 747 airplanes at takeoff. The 27th engine is a Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage and will power the payload to its final targeted orbit. Once, we, once the first and second stage separate, the second stage will propel our payload to its intended orbit. You'll notice some gray paint on the second stage today, and that's just to help absorb some of the heat from the sun to keep our fuel warm during the long flight today. And above the second stage is where our payloads are safely enclosed inside of the fairing, and that's what you're seeing there on your screen. The fairing protects the payload from aerothermal loads, heating, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we no longer need this protection, so we will jettison the fairing as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. 
We will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today with our recovery vessel named Doug. And speaking of fairings, today's launch marks the 100th flight of a reflown payload fairing. The Viasat 3 America's mission also marks the very first Falcon Heavy to launch with flight proven fairing halves. Viasat 3 is the first of three satellites to make up a new global constellation. So here's more about today's mission and payload. Every mission starts with a vision. Ours is simple and powerful. Break new ground in bringing connectivity where it's needed most. At Viasat, we attack very, very, very hard problems. But the harder the problem, the fewer people that can do that, and the more interesting it is to us. The story of Viasat as a whole is a great story. We enable connectivity. We say connecting the world, but that has a number of different meanings depending upon the type of customer you are. From an end user like you or me sitting at home needing connectivity to do our homework or to the connected passenger in an aircraft to the vice president, the president of the United States. Our government customers are global customers. They go wherever they're needed and they want to have the same type of capabilities everywhere they go. For over 35 years, we've worked tirelessly to get to where we are today. Creating satellites with greater capacity to carry more data and handle higher speeds. We've heard a lot of people say it's impossible to do what they're talking about doing at Viasat. You know, a terabit satellite, it's not going to happen. And so I'm really excited to say that's not true. In just a few minutes, we will launch the world's highest capacity single satellite into geostationary orbit. With this launch day, we are entering the Viasat 3 era. We have our first one going up over the Americas. Flight 1 enables us to bring connectivity to the markets here in North America and in South America. The exciting part of Viasat 3 is the fact that it's not just one satellite. By deploying three Viasat 3s, we will have a near global network that can provide services to virtually the entire Earth. One of the features you'll notice is the very large solar arrays. These enable us to generate well over 25 plus kilowatts of electrical power on orbit. That allows us to generate huge amounts of capacity that is then usable on the ground. The enormous capacity of ISAT-3 isn't worth nearly as much if that capacity is stranded in areas where there's no demand. Most of the people in the world only live in a very small fraction of the Earth, yet we still want to be able to connect those people when they move from place to place. Viset 3 is designed to move our capacity to where the demand is. Our ability to move that bandwidth around and really service those dense spots, that's what our customers are looking for. It's not just evolving, it's really like a, a revolution making these big leaps in technology. Then that's, that's cool. <laughs> If you look at the progression from Viasat 1 to Viasat 2 to Viasat 3, Viasat 3 is actually the smallest satellite we've ever built, despite the fact that it's got multiples of capacity. We took things that were twice the size of a human and brought it down to barely the size of a shoebox. The satellite design process is no longer buy parts and boxes and, and hook them up. What we wanted was to invest in technology that can really scale. It's not just a new satellite design, it's a new way to build satellites. We've had to reinvent all parts of the system. I want to thank everybody at Viasat for their role in what we're about to do today. And of course, I want to thank our partners at Boeing. We wouldn't be where we are today without their support. Many of us have spent several years working on this Viasat 3 Flight 1 America's satellite. Today is the day. With the Viasat 3 constellation, Billions of people can access more of the world, unlocking opportunity for everyone, everywhere, starting now. Next up, in preparation for retraction, the clamp arms around the second stage will open, and then that truss structure next to, next to the vehicle known as the strongback will start to retract away from the Falcon Heavy. You can see those clamp arms starting to open up underneath of the fairing on the second stage there. After this, the strongback will retract away from the vehicle, and this is to clear the way for ascent. 
StrongVac is used to provide structural support as well as routing for fluids. NY booster lock load complete. As well as routing for fluids and power to the vehicle. PY booster lock load complete. We just heard locks loading finished up on the PY booster. Next up at around T minus two minutes, locks loading will complete on the second stage. After locks loading finishes loading onto the second stage, the entire vehicle will be completely full with 2.8 million pounds of propellant. Center core locks load is complete. Just hearing the various mis amigos, hoy sí tendremos despegue, lo más probable. Se ha cancelado ya tres veces. Pero todo ayer se canceló por unos vientos fuertes. Este, antes de ayer, unas situaciones donde cayó hasta un rayo. Pero hoy, hoy es como quien dice seguro que va a haber despegue. El tiempo es muy favorable. Tanto aquí en República Dominicana para verlo como para el despegue ya en la Florida. Está muy despejado el cielo. Now again, in just about 15 seconds, we will be completing locks loading on the second stage, which will wrap up the propellant loading phase of our countdown. Second stage, locks load is complete. And there it is, Falcon Heavy is now fully loaded with 2.8 million pounds of propellant. Coming up next, we should see some white clouds venting from the TE locks line. This is completely normal and part of our closeout process. Acaban de avisar que está cargado completamente, tanto la parte superior como inferior del cohete, con combustible, y van a comenzar a desconectar todo lo suministro de energía, ya la computadora va a tomar ahora el control del vehículo a uh, faltando un minuto. LD or launch director should give the final go for launch. Let's listen in for those call outs. Falcon Heavy is in startup. There we go. Falcon Heavy has just entered the startup phase. Go for launch. And with confirmation of go for. Y ahí han dado el visto bueno para el lanzamiento. No fuimos hoy, así que una amiga mía que se llama Gaudis por ahí que está siguiendo la transmisión pues que se vaya subiendo a la azotea porque puede ser que sea visible desde República Dominicana La gente de República Dominicana puede ir subiendo su azotea porque en unos minutos puede ser que sea visible si no hay ninguna nube o algo si la trayectoria pasa cerca en cuestión de unos minutos uno o dos minutos sería visible desde la República Dominicana así que atento al cielo parte norte Va más rápido que la velocidad del sonido ahora mismo.
telemetry on your left hand, on the bottom left hand of your screen. You can see the speed and the altitude of the vehicle and some incredible views of Falcon Heavy in flight. Now, two minutes into flight, we will reduce the thrust on the two side boosters again, and that will be to decrease the forces on the vehicle structure. And that's because the vehicle is now lighter as we're burning through the fuel on the vehicle, uh, but the thrust will remain constant. And wow, that looks amazing on the screen, all three boosters burning bright there. Falcon Heavy is following a nominal trajectory. And good call out on trajectory. Now again, we're gonna throttle down the side boosters and then the next event coming up in about a minute or just under a minute will be BECO, that's booster engine cutoff. That's where we will shut down the engines on the side boosters and then we will separate the side boosters from the center core. And as a reminder, we are not landing our side boosters or center core today due to performance needed on today's mission. And you can see on your right hand screen, we do have a view of the separation mechanisms from the center core to the side boosters. Deberé. Debería de ser visible si la trayectoria fue cerca de República Dominicana. Quienes están afuera deberían de verlo ahora mismo. A menos que la trayectoria haya sido lejos de República Dominicana. Ahora se va a separar, van a separar los dos propulsores. Porque este es el, el Super Heavy que tiene dos, tres propulsores. Ahí están separando. Se debe de ver desde de, de República Dominicana esa separación. Sí, pasó a ser. There. We had Bico booster engine cut off and we watched as those side boosters and you could see them there on your screen, those side boosters falling Vehicle away. Vehicle following a nominal trajectory. Falling away from Falcon Heavy's center core. Awesome views. That's going to wrap it up for the side boosters today. Si lo estás viendo y, y es visible, por favor, dímelo en los comentarios porque yo estoy aquí transmitiendo y no lo puedo ver. Second stage engine. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. Stage one FTS has saved. MVAC ignition. Acquisition signal Bermuda. And we got some great views. We watched Miko as the engines on the center core shut down. Stage separation. And now you can see on your screen that the MVAC engine has ignited. Now we are coming up on fairing separation. Fairing separation confirmed. And also we're able to see and hear the call out that- H2 is following a nominal trajectory. That the fairing halves have separated. They are now falling back down to earth and we will attempt to recover them using our recovery vessel, Doug. And what you're looking at on your screen is a view on our second stage, looking at... It's pues simplemente hermoso este despegue, valió la pena esperar tantos días. Vamos a cortar aquí la transmisión, fue todo un éxito. Bye bye, hasta la próxima.